being 7 o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Vasquez. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Commissioner Gage. Here. Commissioner Gary. Commissioner Lynn. Commissioner Osterhout. Here. Commissioner Twardy. Here. Uh, Commissioner Twardy. I'd like to make a motion to ex please excuse Bill Lynn and Don Gary. Support. It's been moved supported. Uh, as far as Commissioner Bauer, we have not heard. We ex fully expect him, right? I would anticipate okay, attending. Would. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. For right, same sign. Motion carried. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. A little order of business. Uh, those with cell phones, if they would please put them on vibrate or uh, silence them, we would appreciate it. Also like to mention at this time the uh, passing of uh, former mayor Marv Dahlman. Um, he did pass away on, the, I believe, the 6th of March, and um, we didn't know about it when we first met on the 7th, or I, I would have mentioned it then, but certainly Marv, uh, uh, exceptional man, uh, loved the city of Sault Ste. Marie, passed, uh, uh, like I said, on March 6th. Uh, uh, he was on the commission from 65 to 71, and then was mayor from 71, 1971 to 1973. Um, we certainly, our thoughts and prayers uh, go, to, go to his loving wife, uh, Audrey, and certainly their family. At this time, uh, item number one, a public comment on scheduled agenda items. Uh, any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item uh, not to exceed uh, three minutes per person. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment on an agenda item? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to item number two, the consent agenda. Uh, Assistant City Manager Troyer. Under the consent agenda, a minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of March 7th, 2016. Recommended action is to approve the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of March 7th, 2016. Item B, appointments and resignations. One, appointment to the Recreational Building Authority. Recommended action, appoint David John to the Recreational Building Authority for a term to expire January 1, 2020. Item C, communications from the dial ride a, approval of the operations plan. B, approval of the operating budget for the program year beginning October 1st, 2016. And C, resolution of intent to apply for state and federal assistance for fiscal year 2017. Recommended action is to approve the operations plan. B, to approve the operating budget. And C, to approve the resolution of intent to apply for state and federal assistance for fiscal year 2017. Item two from Dinsco Development Company, payment in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village. Recommended action is introduced for a first reading, an ordinance to amend Article 2 of Chapter 18.5 to add new sections 18.5-24 to the Sault Ste. Marie Code of Ordinances to provide for a service in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village and schedule a public comment for the sec and the second reading for the April 4th, 2016 City Commission meeting. Item D, special orders of business. One, scheduling of a public hearing to consider the possible removal of any existing parkland designation for the privately or publicly owned lands at what is commonly known as the Crossings Golf Course. Recommended action, schedule a public hearing for the April 4th, 2016 City Commission meeting. And item E, city manager's report. One, authorization of a contract with the state of Michigan for the annual purchase of road salt. Recommended action authorize the city manager to contract with the state of Michigan for the annual supply of road salt. Okay, thank you. Uh, let the um, minutes show that uh, Commissioner Bauer, uh, attendance 705. Thank you. Um, is there anyone that would like something further explained on the consent agenda? Commissioner Twardy? Yes. I would like to have item C2 pulled off. Okay, and further. Put first on the special orders of business? Yes, please. Okay, item, item number C2, which is the Kinoska? Kinoska. a development company. We'll do that. There doesn't need to be a second. Um, do we, we don't even vote on it, do we? Just correct. Okay, we just take it off and it'll be first item. 
Any other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner Gage. So move approval of the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. So the first item of business under the special orders of business would be the uh, from Ginsco Development Company payment in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to Commissioner Twardy first and then we'll go to the city manager. Commissioner Twardy, you had a question. Yeah, I'm just wondering, um, my sister is the general manager for that property and so I'm wondering if maybe I should abstain from the vote. City Attorney. That would be fine, you may abstain. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, city Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Nathan Kipe, Vice President of Development for Genasco Development Company, a new purchaser of Bridge Village, is requesting that the City Commission consider granting a renewal of the payment in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village, which was previously adopted on June 3rd, 1974. If Genasco obtains the pilot, they are committed to making approximately $3 million in improvements to the campus and extending the subsidy from which 100 seniors and families at Bridge Village benefit. Bridge Village is planning to utilize low-income housing tax credits, a Michigan State Housing Development Authority direct loan and soft loans, and other funding for this work. Genasco Development Company is proposing to pay to the city a payment in lieu of taxes equal to 4% of the annual net shelter rents actually collected, which will generate the same pilot revenues that are currently in place. As a note, a pending issue still exists between the city and the new Bridge Village purchaser concerning which entity will assume jurisdiction over internal roads. This issue would be resolved prior to the second reading of this ordinance, if it occurs. Uh, Mr. Kipe, Vice President for Genasco, is here in attendance to answer any questions. And the first action on this uh, subject matter would be to introduce the ordinance for a first reading and schedule a second hearing allowing public comments at the April 4th, 2016 City Commission meeting. At that point, the City Commission will be able to determine whether the pilot ordinance would be adopted or not. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission introduce for first reading an ordinance to amend Article 2 of Chapter 18.5 to add new sections 18.5 through 24 of the Sault Ste. Marie Code of Ordinances to provide for a service charge in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village and schedule public comments and a second reading for the April 4th, 2016 City Commission meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner uh, Osterhout. I so move that we support the city manager's recommendation. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, we have the representative from the um, uh, company. Is anyone have a question for him at all? Uh, just, uh, I guess, a com just a question to the city manager. I guess these payment in lieu of tax um, um, authorizations are pretty much what a lot of the different housing units um, get in the city of Sault Ste. Marie area. Uh, that would be correct, Mayor. Okay, now I understand you said a $3 million improvement to the facility? Correct, Mayor. That's a, that's a tremendous amount of money that will only benefit uh, the upgrade and, and the, the citizens uh, that, that operate or at least that live there. So it's, um, that's a tremendous amount of money that's going into those units. So that's it's great to see. Good luck. <coughs> Commissioner Gage. My only question is if they have anything they'd like to say. <laughs> you, would you like to say anything? Uh, um, you're good? If you want to come to the, the folks uh, <laughs> listening at home. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nathan Coyf, and it's Genasco Development Company. Thank you for considering the pilot uh, ordinance uh, this evening. I did meet earlier today with the city engineer to discuss the roads, the internal roads, and we, I think have come to a good resolution on that. But we'll be taking those back into our possession. Um, they were formerly, formerly deeded to the city. We'll be taking those back in the maintenance of those roads uh, if this pilot and the project is uh, moving forward. Other than that, um, we certainly appreciate the support of the city. We're looking forward to working in and investing in the city of Sault Ste. Marie. So this will be your first properties in the city of Sault Ste. Marie? Correct. Where are some of the other places that you have properties? Uh, we operate, uh, we own rather, uh, properties in Michigan, Illinois, and Ohio. Okay. So we have about almost 2,000 units in our portfolio. Okay. And this would be the first in the Upper Peninsula. We're looking forward to it. Oh, excellent. Well, welcome to the area. Thank you. you bet. Thank you, Nathan. Anyone else? We have a motion in support. Uh, roll call, please. 
Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Oh, sorry. Yep. Um, Mayor Bassett? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. The next item under special orders of business is a public hearing on confirmation of special assessment roll ST-01-15 for the Prospect Alley resurfacing project. Okay, thank you very much. City Manager, Turner. Thank you, Mayor. At the March 2nd, 2015 City Commission meeting, the City Commission conducted the public hearing of necessity for the Prospect Alley resurfacing project and adopted the resolution ordering that public improvement. Additionally, at the March 7th, 2016 City Commission meeting, the Commission scheduled the public hearing on the confirmation of the special assessment role for this project for this meeting. The City Commission also awarded a contract at the last meeting for this project to Norris Contracting to be executed once the special assessment role is confirmed. The price of that contract has been used to calculate the special assessments on the project at the rates of 60% special assessment and 40% City funds. A notice of the public hearing on the special assessment role for this project has been sent to each affected property owner by the City Engineering Department. This notice advises each affected property owner of their respective assessment amounts, the time and place for the public hearing, and the method of collecting special assessments. A notice of the public hearing was also published in the Sioux News in accordance with the City's Code of Ordinances. Accordingly, it is my recommendation that the City Commission first conduct a public hearing on the special assessment role for the proposed Prospect Alley resurfacing project ST-01-15 and secondarily adopt a resolution confirming special assessment role ST-01-15. Okay, certainly, and, be, and before we go on, just to tell you where Prospect Alley is, um, it is nowhere near Prospect Street, <laughs> but it's, uh, it is the alley between the evening news and the cup of the day in the in that whole area going back across the uh, the new development on the corner the uh, the housing development there also so that's where prospect alley is so at this time we'll conduct a public hearing on the special assessment role for the proposed prospect alley resurfacing project st-01-05 uh, um, i'm sorry 01-15 is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time Hearing none, we'll go to the City Commission. Commissioner Bauer. So move the Commission adopt a resolution confirming special assessment role ST-01-15. Support. <laughs> it's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, that, uh, we're into item number four, which is the uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under the city manager's report would provide for the authorization of the 2016 Spring Cleanup Voucher Program. For the past several years, the city commission has appropriated $25,000 towards the provision of a Spring Cleanup Voucher Program. With this program, city residents can apply for a voucher to cover the cost of $25 for the disposal of trash and debris from their properties located within the city. Based on the administration's past experience, the city should be able to issue approximately 1,400 vouchers and remain under the $25,000 appropriation. Not everybody uses the full value amount of their vouchers, and in some cases, vouchers are not used. During the last fiscal year, the city did not run out of vouchers prior to the expiration of the program on June 30, 2015. Additionally, it is city administration's recommendation that the previous bid awarded to waste management be renewed for the third of a three-year renewal option for this program. All materials would need to be brought to the Dafter Landfill on 12 Mile Road. The program is structured to run from April 11th through June 30th with hours of operation on Monday through Friday lasting from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and seasonal hours occurring on Saturday, May 7th, May 21st, June 4th, and June 25th from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. The hours will also be held during all Wednesdays in the month of June from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission first authorize the Spring Cleanup Voucher Program for 2016, providing 1,400 vouchers at a face value of $25 per voucher for use by city property owners between April 11th through June 30th, and secondarily, accept the proposal from Waste Management of Sault Ste. Marie for the third of a three-year renewal option for the Residential Spring Cleanup Voucher Program as submitted in its request for proposals 
with the city paying $15 for the first 500 pounds of refuse and 2.75 cents per pound for refuse in excess of 500 pounds. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And there are two uh, recommendations in discussion with the city attorney. Those are two separate motions. And I would think, just a comment, April 11th, that's quite a bit uh, ahead of last year's schedule, I would think. I think we were probably looking at the end of April to start, um, which may, may mean that we will we'll, uh, go through at least uh, the majority of the vouchers, I would think. Um, Commissioner Twardy. I move that we authorize the spring cleanup voucher program for 2016, providing 1,400 vouchers at a face value of $25 per voucher for the use by city property owners between April 11th through June 30th, 2016. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, are there any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bosma? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried in. Commissioner Twardy? Yep. And then I move that we accept the proposal from Waste Management Incorporated of Sault Ste. Marie for the third of a three-year renewal option for the residential spring cleanup voucher program as submitted in its request for proposals with the city paying $15 for the first 500 pounds of refuse and 2.75 cents per pound for refuse in excess of 500 pounds. Support. The move supported. Are there any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Basta? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B, under the city manager's report, <coughs> would provide for the approval of a budget amendment for the bridge maintenance project and the approval for a contract amendment for Northwest Design Group for construction engineering services. On the subject, I've requested that city engineer Basista present to the city commission. Good evening, Linda. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, in January, you approved a construction or a contract with MDOT to perform the bridge maintenance uh, project, and the bridges in part of the project are Fort Street, Spruce Street, and West Portage. The project was bid out, the MDOT bid letting was January 8th, and uh, the local bridges program pays for 95% of the construction, and the local share is 5% of construction and engineering. So when bids were received, they were 50% uh, about 50% higher than the engineer's estimate. So MDOT has a process by which uh, when bids are higher than 10% of the engineer's estimate, it has to go through a review process to justify the higher prices. And it was determined uh, in my talking with um, our consultant, NG, MDG, and the MDOT um, folks that uh, we should accept this bid because the amount, the type of work is, it's, it's small, it's, it's a capital preventative maintenance. Most of the bridge contractors in the state are um, the Anlons and the, um, I uh, <clears throat> can't think of the rest of the names, but, well, oh, CA Hall is what was one of our bidders. They're usually replacing bridges, not doing this small work, which is uh, spalling, um, spall repair, epoxy overlay, and so forth. So it was determined that the amount of, of small amount of quantity, the three bridges, and so forth, would did justify the higher price and that we would not get better prices by uh, rebidding the project and so therefore the recommendation was to award the bid to the low bidder being um, uh, Grand River con contractors. And um, so as I said, 95% of the project construction is paid by MDOT, 5% by the city. And so, therefore, the budget needs to be increased to recognize the additional amount that MDOT will be paying. Our 5% was is taken care of in the contingency that we had budgeted. So the additional um, construction amount is still within our budget. We budgeted $49,990 for our 5% share plus the engineering. So that's within budget, but in order to just keep our um, keep our books straight. I'd like to just increase the budget now to recognize MDOT's in increased share. 
And then additionally, NDG was our design consultant, and I asked them for a, a uh, proposal to do the construction engineering services, and their estimated fee for that would be $18,987. And I was requested to approve their proposal for the construction engineering, which was included in our original budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gage. Uh, so move the managers, or there's two, there's two here. Should I have yes, two separate? Yes, two, two separate motions. Okay, then I uh, mo move that we approve a budget amendment of $110,000 to account for the construction contract amount and recognize MD MDOT's increased share of construction. Support. Are there any questions? I just have, um, I noticed that uh, the, the other, what, three, Brigham, Johnson, and Ashman, is, is were not included because they don't need the work or they're just not enough money to take care of? Those, those three bridges or they don't need it? Um, th we actually applied for this grant uh, for the local bridges programs back in 2013, 14 for this okay. fiscal year funding. And we did include Bingham at that time. And, and then that wasn't funded, approved for funding. But subsequently we applied for Bing Bingham and that is in the 2018 funding year. Okay. Uh, the other bridges, of course, Ashman is what a state trunk line. So they Ashman and East Portage are MDOT's bridges. Oh, that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. East Portage would be. And we just did Johnston a couple of years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Takes uh, care of all of our bridges. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else, Commissioner Gage? Uh, more a comment that I guess my favorite type of budget amendment is the type that doesn't cost us any money, <laughs> other than fifty, roughly fifty thousand to match. Yeah, but I mean we already counted for that. Yes. So I mean yes. And so if, if Linda could possibly find more grants or construction projects where 95% of it's covered by the state, then I certainly would appreciate it. And you understand that we as a city are aggressive at doing that so that oh, yeah. a lot of the yeah. uh, infrastructure and uh, stuff that we do is a match Absolutely. amount. So continue We're very, work. very blessed. Yes. Uh, so we have a motion to support. Any other comments? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bosmas? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Motion carried and Commissioner Gage? I move that we approve a contract amendment with NDG in the amount of $18,987 to perform construction engineering services for the project. Support. Support. Move supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner, Thank you, Linda. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosma? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C, under the city manager's report, would provide for the approval of PEHP and general legal fees budget revisions. In 2015, the Public Employees Health Care Plan, PEHP boards, authorized contracting with Mr. Ken Sachs, an attorney who specializes in employee benefits from Miller Canfield, Paddock and Stone, to ensure distributions from the PEHP funds are made in compliance with the regulations of the state and consistent with IRS codes. In December, the City Commission approved several resolutions which initiated and approved annual distributions to retirees of the Department of Public Works from its PEHP funds utilizing MERS as its provider. The remaining three boards have requested additional research regarding various proposed methods of distribution. The first invoice for legal fees for work done on the PEHPs through the end of July was in the amount of $8,700. The second invoice was just received for work done through the end of January, which totaled $17,509.50. A final letter of opinion was received from Mr. Sachs, who estimated it will generate a bill in the amount of $9,800. This would bring the grand total for Miller Canfield charges to just over $36,000. It is the opinion of City Attorney Canelo that there may be more legal work to be done during the year. Therefore, a suggestion, suggested budget amount totaling $40,000 for this work is recommended. While the bills are itemized, it is not clear to which group the charges will be applied currently because the work being done for one group is certain to benefit the rest of the groups. Finance Director Collins suggests that the legal cost once finalized be discussed with each board and divided in the most equitable manner and possibly split between the four boards at the end of the year. Mr. Sachs has a small additional amount of work yet to do for the city, which is unrelated to the PEHP fund. This is in regards to the city's health care opt-out payments. Mr. Sachs estimated that the work can be done quickly and at a minimum expense. 
Finance Director Collins recommends an additional $2,000 to the City Attorney's Department in new contracted services line item. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission authorize the requested budget revision to cover legal fees to the PEHP fund for a grand total of $40,000. And just to note, the $40,000 is different than the $42,000 in the first recommendation in this memorandum. For a total of $40,000 with amounts to be divided among the departments and to be redistributed between them, if necessary, and at the direction of the PEHP boards. And additionally, recommend that the City Commission authorize a $2,000 budget revision to the City Attorney's Department to cover legal fees to benefit City Administration and the work associated with their needs. Okay, uh, thank you. There are two <coughs> recommendations, again, in discussion with the City Attorney. Those are two separate motions. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. So move that the Commission authorize the requested budget revision to cover legal fees to the PEHP fund for a grand total of $42,000 with amounts to be divided among the departments and to be redistributed between them if necessary and at the end of the PEHP board, at the direction, excuse me, of the PEHP board. Support. Okay, and that uh, 42000 is actually 40000 uh, it's corrected by the city manager in his in his report. Okay. My apologies. Okay. Um, is there any are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage.
Yes. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosman? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Bauer? I also recommend that the commission authorize a $2,000 budget revision to the city attorney's department to cover legal fees to benefit the city administration. Support. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, Commissioner Ostrow. Oliver, how often are we uh, are we going to be subjected to this forty thousand dollar charge? I mean, how often are they reviewing this to to keep up with the um, with the regulations? Is this something that occurs every five years, every ten years? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Osterhout. I will actually uh, defer this question to the city attorney, who has um, in probably in the best position to explain the legal fees on this matter. City attorney. Thank you. Uh, first off, the adjustment to my department has nothing to do with me. Uh, that has to do with how finance keeps track of things. I don't have any charges to the PEHP accounts of any kind. Uh, I'm a fiduciary member of the board representing the city's interest, along with two members of the union who are fiduciary representatives representing the union's interest. And then each of the boards presently has a vacant seat for a, a a uh, community member to sit on. The um, uh, attorney fees were extraordinary because we are at the point where the PEHPs are making, uh, beginning to make distributions and plan for distributions. And the methods and means to make those distributions had never before been analyzed or thought about. So this will not be a recurring expense. Thank you. Any other <laughs> questions? Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Osterhout? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosmas? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item D under the city manager's report is regarding an update regarding operations at the Crossings Golf Course. As commissioners are aware, the most recent operational agreement between the city and Sault Ste. Marie Country Club was approved by the City Commission on July 21, 2014. This agreement provided for the making of an annual $25,000 stipend by the City to Sault Ste. Marie Country Club, Inc., while at the same time providing that both parties would list the combined golf course assets maintained by each party for sale. At its April 20, 2015 regular meeting, following the consideration of additional feedback that had been received from the community on the subject matter, the City Commission took action to reconsider the listing of the combined assets of both parties at the crossings for sale. At that time, the Commission also took further action to appoint City Commissioners Geary and Twardy to a committee tasked with continuing negotiations with Country Club Inc. on a successor operational agreement that would potentially provide for a long-term resolution between both parties. This committee, which also included myself, the City Attorney and Finance Director, uh, initially met in June 3, 2015, with subsequent meetings occurring throughout the fall until it became clear that Sault Ste. Marie Country Club would not be able to be in a position to make payments to the city on its amounts owing. In sum, the amounts owing to the city totaled $53,592.49, and a payment had not been made by the Country Club, Inc. to the city on delinquent bond payments since October 2014. Otherwise stated, and unfortunately, it had become apparent throughout the course of negotiations <coughs> that the Country Club, Inc. was in a state of insolvency. Recently, on March 3, 2016, a meeting of the shareholders of Sault Ste. Marie Country Club, Inc. was held, during which a vote was taken to approve the provision by Sault Ste. Marie Country Club, Inc. of a deed to its property to Central Savings Bank. At that time, city administration and Central Savings recognized the urgency of having a continued operation at the crossings and have been working to position the Recreational Building Authority to assume golf course operations during the upcoming season. <clears throat> At the same time, necessary steps were being taken by the Recreational Building Authority to open the crossings for the upcoming golf season. The City Golf Course Committee and Central Savings Bank were conducting negotiations with an individual who has become interested in acquiring the combined assets of golf course properties and materials at the crossings. In mid-February, City administration was contacted by Mr. Fred Benoit, Jr., who expressed an interest in purchasing the golf course assets at the crossings from both the City of Sault Ste. Marie and the Sault Ste. Marie Country Club, as well as Central Savings Bank. Mr. Benoit, Jr. is the director of Benoit Properties International, based in Naples, Florida. 
Both Mr. Benoit Jr. and his father, Mr. Fred Benoit Sr., have lived within the city of Sault Ste. Marie, are familiar with the golf course, and would be business partners in managing the course upon any acquisition. It should be noted that Mr. Fred Benoit Sr. has operated a number of local restaurant establishments within the community, including Mr. B's and the Robin's Nest. Between mid-February and March 18th, uh, detailed and multi-layered negotiations involving Mr. Benoit Jr., the City Golf Course Committee, and Central Savings Bank occurred regarding the sale of the combined golf course assets. These negotiations have resulted in a tentative agreement being reached between all three parties that would provide for the sale of the combined assets to Mr. Benoit Jr. with the following terms. The buyer would pay $450,000 in cash. The buyer would receive a $57,000 credit on this amount to account for the prepaid green fees previously paid by golfers to the Sault Ste. Marie Country Club as requested by the city. The buyer would receive a $10,000 credit for capital expenditures. Factoring the two detailed credits, the buyer would ultimately pay $383,000 in cash to the city to acquire the combined club and course assets. Prior to closing, the golf course assets that have been deeded to Central Savings Bank would be provided to the city so that a deed restriction and reverter clause that has been included within the draft of the purchase agreement could be used to ensure that an 18-hole golf course continues to remain in existence at the site and to ensure that the course is open to the public for play. Additionally, the buyer would obtain a 77-acre parcel of land that is located to the south of the parcel upon which the Crossings Golf Course and Club are situated for $3,000 for proposed future development. The buyer would also obtain a number of lots of property owned by Central Savings Bank that have little value and adjoin the course. In full, the 110-acre golf course parcel, the 77-acre parcel, and the transferred lots currently owned by Central Savings Bank would all be placed on the tax roll in full as required under state law. The City and Recreational Building Authority would also assist the buyer with advertising for a head golf professional and general manager, and the buyer would assume responsibility for loans on the carts that the Country Club had financed through Wells Fargo and its beverage cart loan. With the additional provision on top of these others, that the agreement will need final approval by Central Savings Bank and the City Commission. In addition, there are a number of improvements that Mr. Benoit Jr. would be looking to make to the course, as reported by him, that he estimates will exceed $400,000 after any closing, and just to briefly summarize some of these, uh, his list of changes would include the, an immediate name change from the crossings back to the Sault Ste. Marie Country Club, working on extensive improvements to the golf course with new fairway bunkers, filling existing bunkers with sand, leveling all tee boxes, cleaning up existing ponds, repaving portions of cart paths, and planting additional trees, and also creating a short game practice area along Riverside Drive. Additionally, Mr. Benoit Jr. would introduce a new restaurant and bar called Grill Room 1902 with the kitchen manager prior to the 2016 golf season coming in and potentially working directly with Lay Shenoa Culinary School to incorporate future graduates. Additionally, Mr. Benoit Jr. would intend to have live music by the pool every Friday and have an enhanced tournament schedule for locals, including men's, women's, and couples outings. Regarding the existing debts on the course and club properties, and the split of the sales proceeds, approximately $110,000 is owed to the city, owed by the city to Central Savings Bank, and an additional $39,371 is owed to the city by Country Club Inc. for debt paid by the city to Central Savings Bank for past course upgrades. An additional $13,310 is owed to the city and other taxing units by Country Club Inc. for delinquent personal property taxes. Of the 383,000 net sales proceeds amount, the city would receive $132,000, with this amount being sufficient to pay off the remaining debt that the city owes to Central Savings Bank in the amount of about $110,000, and would also be sufficient to recover a considerable portion of the amount the Country Club previously did not return to the city for bond payments. In negotiating this tentative agreement, there are a number of factors that the City Golf Course Committee considered including the fact that this transaction, in accordance with state law, would result in a significant portion of property being placed on the tax roll, with the estimated tax revenues across all units for the 18 holes on the course being approximately $16,902. The fact that additional tax revenue 
may be gained through potential future development on the 77 acre parcel that is a component of the transaction. The projection that if the Recreational Building Authority operated the course for the upcoming season, it would be at a reduced service level as compared to past years, with the restaurant and pool likely being closed and the experience of citizens and customers at the course potentially being diminished. The fact that three financial projections completed by myself, the finance director, and Central Savings Bank showed that the golf course, if managed under the Recreational Building Authority, could lose up to $70,000 to $120,000 during this upcoming golf season, with the city also being required to continue payments on the $110,000 in debt it currently owes to Central Savings Bank for past drainage improvements made to the course. Additionally considered by the committee was the projection that the value of time that would be required from city administration to manage operations at the course would range between thirty dollars and $40,000 if the Recreational Building Authority operated the course. The projection that additional opportunity costs would be incurred by the city in order to operate the course as the time that could be directed more towards the established goals of the city commission would be directed elsewhere. And the fact that city administration did contact a number of different entities that may have an interest in acquiring the combined golf course assets at the crossings with these entities either not responding or declining a current interest in acquiring the properties. In an effort to further emphasize the fiscal obligations that would accompany the management of the course and club, it should be noted that the amount that may be lost by both the city and central savings bank operating the course would not include major capital expenditures for equipment or major capital expenditures for improvements to the course. As noted prior, city administration has drafted a purchase agreement that is currently, uh, has currently been signed by Mr. Benoit Jr. The purchase agreement can be approved according to City Attorney Canello at the April 4, 2016 regular meeting of the City Commission following an action that would also be taken by the City Commission, if approved, to facilitate this transaction that would include the removal of any existing parkland status for any private or publicly owned portions of the existing club and course. In the interim, a short-term management agreement may be necessary to further facilitate this transition. As city manager, it is my perspective that this negotiated and tentative agreement represents a new direction for operations at the golf course and club, which, as noted, the buyer would intend to immediately rename as the Sault Ste. Marie Country Club. In addition, it also represents an opportunity for the city to fully transition operation, operations at this facility to private enterprise while meeting existing debts, limiting future financial obligations and taxpayer exposure, ensuring that public play continues on site, and guaranteeing the continued existence of an 18-hole golf course. Finally, the future potential development of properties adjoining the golf course, as well as investments that the buyer intends to make in the course and club, would represent new capital being injected into the community and an opportunity for the public tax roll to further build and benefit the community as a whole. That concludes my status update. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much for that uh, lengthy explanation, but it, it was a complicated uh, uh, procedure and uh, certainly I, and can, uh, Commissioner Twardy and Commissioner uh, um, Gary were part of the committee and I give uh, Commissioner Twardy the opportunity at this point to say a few words. Yeah, I do, I'll be brief. Sure. Um, I do have Don or Commissioner uh, Gary's permission to speak on his sure. behalf and mostly what we wanted to say is that anytime you get more than two parties involved in any negotiation, it, it, you know, the, it gets more tricky. And I just wanted to say thank you to Central Savings Bank and especially to Ron Meister and to John Allison for helping us to facilitate this whole process so smoothly. It could have been uh, much more difficult and we all really worked together great as a team. And one of the examples I gave to Oliver is I, I said, you know, it's just like any great hockey game. Sometimes you go out and you're pretty good warriors on the ice, but at the end you come off and you shake hands and you really respect each other in, in the end for it. So it, it worked out really well and it wouldn't have been that well, that great had we not had really good people involved, so. Great. Let me um, just, can, if other, others would like to speak to you, let me just say I, I certainly appreciate the um, stepping up of a young individual uh, in the community, born and raised here, uh, played on the course, and um, you know, living primarily in Florida, and I think he also has a home uh, in uh, Omaha, possibly. But 
Um, you know, we, we often talk about growing wealth in your community, and you know, this is a gentleman that has stepped forward and, uh, and will be part of this community for hopefully uh, many years. He has a lot of family here, and uh, it's just nice to see the, uh, that individual or individuals of his age you know, coming back and sharing uh, some of their wealth with the community, making it better. And I, I think it's a, a certainly, a, we really appreciate as a commission the efforts of uh, certainly the Central Savings Bank, the city administration, and, and, uh, and Fred, uh, Fred Blank Jr. for stepping up and making this happen because as, as the Commissioner Twardy said, with three entities involved and two especially that are, that are owed money and uh, making it all work out, it, uh, it really uh, speaks well to the, to the committee and uh, we, we thank you very much and it looks, uh, looks going forward, it looks like it's a, a great opportunity and a great development, hopefully. I just wanted to thank everybody involved for the hard work as well because it was it was a quite a sticky situation and I am also happy to see that uh, Fred Bojoint Jr. is getting involved with this. I just think it's a win-win situation no matter which way you look at it because the cost that we would incur running that golf course waiting for a higher price would have just been would have ended up being just even a bigger mess than what we're dealing with right now. So I just think that it's a win-win situation for all. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Gage. Um, I also want to echo, and um, I bumped into Kathy and Donna a number of times last week, and it, you could see that they had put a lot of time and effort into this, and, and, and Oliver as well. Um, this is an amazing uh, offer. I think it's very good. The only thing that I would wonder is that if, if whether or not we need to put it out to bids, given that the city charter says that any deal over $10,000 has to go out to bids. City manager. Right. I would uh, ask the city attorney to weigh in after my, my comment that this is something that we had both looked at. And uh, we did contact other entities that may have an interest, but the land sale policy also provides for the flexibility for uh, transactions, including the disposition of land. Anything else? There was quite a number of potentially interested parties that were directly contacted by administration for the purposes of determining if there was anyone interested who had a competing proposal. Uh, the uh, proposal received from uh, Mr. Benoit Jr. was the only proposal geared 100% towards golf and has been the city's interest in that property since 1965 is to have golf on that property. Uh, we were successful in having his proposal tailored so that it will ensure golf on that property uh, into the future in perpetuity. So the transaction falls outside of the city's land sales uh, policies because number one, it was not a fee simple absolute sale. It was a restricted sale. Number two, it was done in conjunction with development. And so therefore there was no requirement for us to, uh, to uh, seek competitive proposals. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So that's a status report. So April 4th uh, it will be on the agenda. Uh, that is correct, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that, that concludes the city manager's report. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Well, that's is that yours or mine? That must be yours. Okay. Uh, we are into the status reports. Item A under status Five. reports yep. is from Downtown Development Authority Director Justin Nepper regarding the Michigan Main Street program. And Justin is here tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I, I'll be brief. Last last time I talked for a long time, so I'll try to be short tonight. Uh, the Michigan Main Street program is a program of the Michigan Housing Development Authority, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, and the National Main Street program, which is a, a, a nationwide uh, alternative to downtown development authorities pretty much. In all of the, the United States, I believe there are only three states that have downtown development authority laws. I think it's Colorado, Michigan, Georgia, maybe Florida. Uh, so we're kind of a unique, uh, unique state in that we have downtown development authorities. Many other states have Main Street programs, they're called. And in Michigan, there's a growing, uh, a growing movement towards uh, kind of cooperating with downtown development authorities and the Michigan Main Street program. What it does is 
uh, if we get accepted, uh, there's two things that happen. One is a, 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 a opportunity to get $50,000 per year for five years in technical support that ranges from everything from uh, business consulting to board training to free architectural drawings, uh, all sorts of different things to help our downtown grow. Uh, so that's, of course, one goal. The bigger uh, goal is to really uh, work at changing the way the Downtown Development Authority works. Uh, and in simplest form, what it does is changes the direction of downtown development as a, um, but, you know, as an economic development style, if you will, from being a top-down focused downtown development authority board, myself, um, you know, government, to being volunteer driven. And so what the Michigan Main Street program encourages is that we uh, really become bottom up, uh, not bottom up, but I'm sorry, uh, volunteer focused where people, grassroots, that's what I was looking for, uh, where everyone has a part in playing uh, in, in downtown development from your average citizen to uh, your average business owner, anybody and everybody out there uh, comes together and helps bring ideas to the table and has the opportunity to impact the direction of downtown. So that's what Main Street is all about. Um, there's a lot of things that will be happening. Over uh, two years ago, the DDA board explored joining the Main Street program. Uh, we got accepted as an associate level, and we were working on becoming what's called a select level community, only three communities out of about 30 that apply, get accepted into that. Uh, we were going to apply in 2015, hit uh, massive amounts of construction downtown, which uh, kind of got our focus on getting through the construction period. So now we're back on the back on the, in the saddle working towards the select level and um, in February of 2017 January February someone there will be uh, actually presenting in Lansing and uh, hopefully it'll be uh, many people in the community will go down to Lansing present as to why we should be the next Michigan Main Street community and uh, so the reason I wanted to talk to the to each of you is that I'll be uh, wording, working with each of you as well of our, as our steering committee uh, the DDA board is appointed a steering committee uh, task force to get us through the application process. So the city commission would be um, at some point signing a pledge for five years on behalf of the uh, Main Street program sometime this summer. We'll be coming back on that at a future point. But each of you uh, will be talking to you about your, re your representative organizations, businesses, or as individuals, whether it's uh, pledges, uh, letters of support, um, coming with us to Lansing in January. All of those items uh, will be coming up. So. At this point, uh, what I'd like to ask each of you on the commission is to spend some time, as you have time over the next few months, maybe checking out the Michigan Main Street website, um, seeing what the Main Street program is all about. There's a specific four-point approach, it's called, which is focused on establishing uh, funded committees that would report to the DDA um, that would kind of shift our budget over the next few years um, that are focused on design economic restructuring, organization, and promotion, uh, kind of a four-point approach to grassroots-led downtown development. So that's what we're working on. Um, and um, open to any questions. Otherwise, I just wanted to give, uh, give you guys a heads up on what, we are, what we're working on. Any questions, of Justin? I tell you, it's an exciting program. They will, um, if we get to be in the Main Street program, they will spend approximately, was it 250 over a over a five-year five period. period in technical assistance and and help and it's really involving the total community uh, in the downtown area and others um, in making things occur in your downtown and then growing the downtown and economic creating an economic base you know strong economic base in the downtown which will further uh, business entrepreneurship uh, uh, in the downtown area so it's it's an excellent and we've been trying to be there and uh, now we have an opportunity to, to make the next level so Thank you. Commissioner Torty. Just one more comment, too. I just, uh, well, Oliver and I are on your steering committee, and so I just thought it was really interesting in our meeting the other day that it seems to me that this commission and the goals for the Main Street program are very much in line with each mm -hmm. other, and that's really exciting to me because I think that we're going to be able to accomplish a lot with this, and we're going to be able to satisfy our goals, and then uh, I, can, I just think the program is going to be fantastic because the Absolutely. more we can get community volunteers vested in our downtown area, the stronger we're going to be. And, and one thing I did want to mention too, just to the, the general public and the community, um, is one of the things the Michigan Main Street program focuses on is that uh, a staff person like myself, uh, I don't 
own downtown. I'm not, uh, you know, the only person that has uh, a voice in what happens downtown. And what's very important is that uh, everybody gets involved. Everybody uh, has their own, um, you know, opinions, ideas, and uh, thoughts on how we can improve downtown. And so, throughout the course of this application process, what I'm encouraging people to do is um, don't don't feel shy about speaking your mind. Uh, don't think you're going to hurt my feelings. We're working towards making, um, you know, a change in how downtown is managed towards being community uh, community management and community ownership of downtown. So, um, looking forward to a lot of people being involved. Great. Thank you. Item B under status reports is regarding the master recreation plan, the final draft being released for public review and comment. And so the commission is aware uh, the master recreation plan should be amended to remove references to the crossings golf course as a public property, a public park to facilitate any uh, disposition or sale of the property. And accordingly, a revised master recreation plan has been made available for public review and comment it was released on Wednesday, March 16th, and the comment period is scheduled to close on April 18th. Copies are available at the City Clerk's Office and at the Bayless Public Library, and it can also be viewed on the City website, with written comments being received by the City Clerk's Office by 5 o'clock on Monday, April 18th. Uh, if you could, please include your name and address with any comments, and emails directed to the Office of the City Clerk may also be accepted regarding this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next one. Item C is pertaining to the budget submission and review schedule. And as a reminder to the community, on Monday, April 18th, the annual budget will be formally submitted to the City Commission. The administration anticipates distributing the budget documents to commissioners by Thursday, April 14th. As commissioners are aware, budget work sessions have been scheduled for Tuesday, April 19th, as well as Wednesday and Thursday, April 20th and 21st, if needed with these work sessions scheduled to begin at 4.15 p.m. in the Commission Chambers. Thereafter, on Monday, April 25th, the City Commission will hold a special meeting at 4.15 p.m. to reconcile the proposed budget and also schedule a public hearing for the Monday, May 16th, regular meeting of the City Commission, after which the Commission may approve the budget. Please note that June 1st is the latest date for budget approval as outlined by the City Charter. As Commissioners are also aware, Former City Commissioner Bill Munsell will be facilitating the Commission's budget review, a role he has played for almost two decades. The Administration appreciates Mr. Munsell's time invested in this process and looks forward to his input. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you, and continue to thank uh, former Commissioner uh, Bill Munsell because he, he's been tremendous and he keeps keeps giving uh, to the community and uh, he does just a tremendous job as the uh, facilitator for the, the budget session. So we, we certainly thank Bill again. Does that conclude the status reports? It does. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Item number six, matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience that can make a comment at this time? I'm going to put him on the spot. He didn't know he was going to do it. Or you can, I see uh, uh, Fireman uh, Scott Labonte back there, and we had our uh, battle of the badges, so to speak. And um, if, you, if you're not prepared, you can do it at a different meeting, but you're, you got it all on the phone. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind just giving us an update. Not. Good evening, Commissioners, Mayor Vospis. Um, evening. I'm happy to announce and report that this year we've had another successful Battle of the Badges. We raised in excess of $3,700 for the Chippewa County Community Foundation. Uh, another great time, even though the police officers won the game, uh, <laughs> uh, it was still a great time. We, we had a good time. It was a, a lot of good, healthy uh, uh, camaraderie between yes. the departments. I'd just like to take a moment to, to thank a number of people, uh, including yourself, uh, Mayor Bospis, Commissioner Kathy Torty, Commissioner Ray Bauer, uh, Amber Petriangelo, and Jen Nelson uh, down in the clerk's office. Uh, Justin Nepper with the DDA, Harmony Health Foods, the Sioux Evening News, uh, the Polar Stadium staff, Sioux Brewing Company, Cup of the Day, the Sioux Visitors Bureau, Doss Gift House, uh, Eagles Hockey, as well as the City of Sioux St. Marie for allowing us to use the Polar for the day. Great. No, it was a great time. It was a beautiful Saturday. <laughs> but uh, it was a decent crowd. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, one person that was uh, taking attendance. Um, 
speculated that our, our attendance was up about 10% this year. So hopefully Excellent. we can make it even yes. grow a little bit more even next yeah. year. We're looking forward to that already. Great. No, uh, it's, a tr it's a tremendous activity. Uh, and I know it takes a lot of your time. Boy, I, <laughs> you were, uh, you were uh, engulfed in that whole thing and, and you were sweating profusely from, <laughs> and I thought, it's, not, it's cold in here. What are you doing? <laughs> You've been running up and down the stairs. Uh, you know, but we, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people involved, a lot of people kept coming down and, and uh, you know, giving money. Um, uh, and, and the people uh, that were going in the box for penalties or, or taking extra shots, uh, it's just a good time. It, it was. Really and nice I time. have to say, I, we appreciate the idea of uh, being able to buy a penalty. That certainly uh, mm -hmm. was an idea that, that did uh, garner quite a few, quite a few dollars. So Great. We Great. hope to expand on it again next year. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for the report. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, matters presented by the City Commission. Commissioner Twardy. Just one quick sure. thing. I wanted to mention now that um, Bird's Eye Outfitters is now open. You're one of your new neighbors and my new neighbor. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a pretty cool store. And I mm -hmm. went in there a couple of times last week. <laughs> <laughs> a couple, just a couple of times. They have great coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, and, 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 do, and donuts. I mean, yep. Sometimes. That's what I said. It's a different store. It with, just uh, fits all of your needs. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, a lot, if you're interested in the outdoors, it has uh, just about anything you can think of um, mm -hmm. for being in the outdoors and the and the quality um, clothing that'll keep you warm in the outdoors. So, okay. if you haven't seen it or haven't been by the the, the building and the business yet, you should stop because it, it's, it's certainly worth it. Uh, Sioux, I was just going to say, the Sioux High Welding class did all of that metal work in there. I wasn't oh. sure if you were aware of that. No, I didn't that. know. I didn't yeah, know that. all of the metal work inside. That's Greg uh, Rambo, I think. Uh, yes, yes, Greg Rambo. Yeah. And then he also repurposed a barn for all of oh, that okay. wood in oh, there. Excellent. So, yeah, that very, was... Very, very nice. So it's beautiful cool. inside yeah. there, and I just wanted to welcome them to the community. Good idea. And where else yeah. can you enjoy a beer while shopping? I know. <laughs> I think you shop more. <laughs> Commissioner Gage. Um, I was just going to say that they have great coffee. I can't necessarily comment on the beer there. You know, I <laughs> never went in there for beer, certainly. Um, but I also wanted to mention that uh, last uh, Friday was the, I uh, forget the number, the f number, um, the annual snowman burning at Lake State. And it's looking, if you see the forecast for this weekend, like for the second year in a row, we burn the snowman and then a snowstorm comes <laughs> afterwards. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. so um, uh, jokingly, we say that that means that the snowman's working on his appeal. So um, that's, uh, that's our fault there at Lake State for the snow this, this weekend. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that um, we certainly, on behalf of the commission, uh, you, you um, suffered the loss of your grandmother. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, it's I tough to do, I know. So yeah, I appreciate condolences. that. She was, a, she was a wonderful lady. And, um, and one, one quick story, because it's commission-related sure. about my grandma. Um, the very first time I ran for the city commission, she said to me, Jay, um, if you're running against Bill Munsell, I'm not going to vote for you. <laughs> and I said, Grandma, you don't even live in town. You can't vote for me anyway. And she said, I'll call people. <laughs> and so, yeah. so I'm certainly going to miss her quite story. a bit. And she was a great, uh, she was very good. So we'll miss her. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone Just else? Just like Bill Munsell, I guess. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. Your Honor, so moved that we adjourn this meeting. Support. support. It's been moved support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.